Hello folks, welcome to another video, this time a virtual whiteboard session. It's going to be on another remote design sprint topic. I'm going to show you how to run a user journey mapping session when you're running remote design sprints. Previously, we've done a video about user journey maps. I'm also going to link it in this video under this, the description below. Uh, make sure you go and check that one out because it will give you an understanding about user journey maps in a design sprint context in general. But this is where I'm going to show you how to do it remotely because we've been doing this a lot here in Relab um, lately, ex especially during and post COVID. Well, it's not really post COVID, isn't it so far? Um, but for now, well, hopefully it'll be post soon. I'm getting distracted, but let's get on to it. All right, guys, before we start the user journey map, I'd really appreciate it if you give us a subscribe, a thumbs up, a comment even. If you have thoughts, criticism, any type of uh, comments, questions even about this topic that we're discussing right here, feel free to drop a comment and I'll be sure to respond to you. So user journey map, now we're in our mural. Uh, there's no one else here other than myself, uh, but imagine that there are a few people in here. Uh, if you're doing this remotely, you're gonna be in a Zoom or Teams or Google Meet uh, session as well. Doesn't really matter, but especially in this content, I'm gonna run through user journey maps. Alrighty, before we start, um, one thing that we need to always remember is who is our proto persona. If you haven't seen our previous videos um, around this, go and check it out. Uh, but I want to focus on the pre-flight artifacts. Uh, I'll, I'll make sure that we have all of the links down below in the description as well. Make sure you see all of these other videos before getting into the user journey map. Um, because it'll give you a better understanding. But what I want to do here is I want to copy my proto persona description, which is just a, a very short sentence about who are we dealing with here, who's our target audience or user specifically. We've got Rebecca, who is a budding fashion and lifestyle designer in her 20s, aspiring to establish her own brand and collection. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to bring it to my board over here, which is the user journey map area in Mural. All right, so we just remember and keep in mind that Rebecca is who is our proto persona here. All right, so we're doing this for Rebecca. We're putting ourselves in Rebecca's shoes and trying to understand what is it that she wants to do. Um, so as usual, what I like to do is I'd like to start with the different stages. Uh, and I always like to start with the goal. Uh, so I've just double clicked that in Mural. I'm just going to change this post-it note to a rectangular one. And I'm just going to write goals. Goal. Goal or goals? Goals. So remember, this is not your sprint goal. It's not even your company's goal. It's just Rebecca's goal as a proto persona here. Um, and I'm going to write down what her goals are. So I might just use a different post-it color here. I'll mark this as a blue. And here I'm going to type in her goal as a budding fashion and lifestyle designer relevant to the product that we're making. If you're unsure about it, I'll just read it out for you once more what our goal here is. But this was in another video about goals and questions. Go and have a look at that as well. Our goal here is in two years time, this digital platform, which is the product that we're creating, will be the go-to channel for creatives in Asia, Europe, and North America that it is accessible to many. So that was our long-term goal. We've got a few other questions here. I won't bother about that because it's not directly relevant to what we're doing here. So anyway, that's just goal for your information uh, of the project. And here are goals of Rebecca as the user. Um, I can think about, you know, what she wants to do is she wants to easily sell products online. She wants to be able to, so I'm just thinking out loud. Uh, so be gentle on me, okay? Easily create promotions. I'll just write a couple more for the purposes of this example or exercise. Now, in real life situation, you might have a lot more than what I'm doing here. 
but for the purposes of this, let's just cover maybe four goals. Integrate seamlessly with a with delivery services for logistics uh, and shipping purposes. And another goal is to track detailed order and sales history. Okay, so those are the things that Rebecca, as the user persona, would like to achieve uh, while using the product or the app uh, that we're trying to create here. So at least we build some empathy here, trying to understand her needs and her goals. What I want to do now is create another stage up front about how does Rebecca discover about this product. So I'm going to copy one of these cards. You could copy, you could double click, uh, whatever. But how does Rebecca discover this product that we're creating? Well, she, where the mouth is always an obvious one. She heard from someone. She was informed by by event organizer if she was in like an arts market or something like that event organizer and uh well a couple of other common ways of finding out is through social media posts um uh, online ads perhaps online or retargeting ads retarget Ting ads and uh, maybe email campaigns. Well, you could go on and on, but I'll stop there. Emails. All right. So we understand what Rebecca's goals are and we understand how Rebecca finds out about our product. So our task here now as a designer is uh, we're trying to link discover and goals. So the other stages that are available or that might happen between Rebecca discovering the product and achieving her goal are she's going to need to learn or understand the product's offering and its value propositions. She's going to use it, test it, use it, and she's going to decide, which means like she's going to make some decision-making process, whether it's uh, uploading her product or um, uploading her product or making it available for sale online and things like that. All right. So what we want to do is just link these steps in between from discover to goals. All right. So I'm just going to start from discover here. Okay. So as soon as she heard about it or heard from someone or saw it somewhere in social media, she's going to click on it and she's going to land somewhere. So it'll be, she'll land somewhere and she'll browse it. So she'll browse landing page. Again, I'm making this quite simple for you to easily understand, but in real situations and projects or in real sprints, it might get a little bit more complicated than this. Um, so imagine these steps here will lead her to browse landing page. And when she browse the landing page, she will, uh, she can create an account So at this point in time, she's probably somewhere between learning and, and using the product. And now that we're here, we're going to need to analyze the steps between creating a product and easily sell products online. So the things that she might do there is while using it is she will manage products, product collections. Um, she'll be, I'm going to make it quite simple guys, just so we can go through the video quickly, uh, publish, she's going to publish the product collection or collection, manage product or, or collection. I'll just say, or, or collection. All right. All right. So we've got these steps here, right? Um, somewhere there. All right. So I'll just quickly do the same for the rest of the other ones. 
uh, for promotions. She is probably going to do more or less similar things. Manage promotions. Publish promotions. And then she can easily create promotions. Uh, with delivery services, she is probably going to start somewhere in receiving order and then managing orders. She'll fulfill the orders. Fulfill orders. Um, and then integrate seamlessly with delivery services. Track detailed order. How does she get there? Uh, well, from order, she'll probably go to view orders or view history, sales history or transaction history. And she'll download reports. All right. All right. I'm happy with that for now. And what we want to do basically is just connect all of this as how we are doing it. In Miro, what I'd like to do is probably um, just add some arrows here. Like that. And then I'll just copy that across. All right, let me speed this up and I'll get back to you in a second. All right, we're back. Um, so I've done this very, very quickly. So we've got all of the stages covered in this map. And that's basically it. This is the user journey map. Um, you can even go further with post goal stuff, um, but I won't cover it here. Um, but essentially what happens after delivery, this is where I would generally put um, things like uh, transactional emails and uh, maybe follow up and reviews and things like that. But for the purposes of this, again, I'll just leave this here. The next thing that you want to do in a design sprint typically is you want to highlight your area of focus, the thing that you want to cover the most during the sprint. So oftentimes your user journey map will be quite broad and it'll be impossible for you to prototype the whole thing or pointless really. So what you want to focus is the goal. Once again, the feature that is going to be unique, uh, the value proposition that the product has and uh, defines the product and, and gives that unique ability for the product to be marketed in, uh, in the public. So the things that I would assume here in this product that we're doing here in our case uh, is going to be unique because of its management, product management feature that allows people to easily sell products online and maybe or also fulfill the orders very, very easily. So I'm just going to highlight an area here. Now, if I was doing this on a whiteboard, I'll probably just grab a different marker and highlight the area. But since I'm doing it here, I'll probably just select my the stages that I want to highlight and just change it into a different color. There we go. Okay, so this these orange ones here are our focus. What I can even do here is, so for my team members to not be confused, I can just change this into uh, a key, a simple key, just for people to understand what this color means. Right, uh, so that is sprint focus. There we go. Right. Okay. So that is it. There you go. That's your user journey map. And that's how we would do it during a remote design sprint session. Uh, if you have other ideas on how to do this, or if you've done it differently, or if you have tips even for us, let us know. We're more than happy to listen. But otherwise, I hope that's useful for you. If you have any questions, please drop in a comment and I'll reply to you. Um, and don't forget, again, share this around, share it with people who would benefit from it. And also give us a thumbs up and a subscribe. Thank you, guys. Have a good day.